In this episode, we are going to talk about memory forensics. In digital forensics, computer's memory holds a lot of important information for an investigation. You can get information like user's browsing history, user's passwords, the connections that was made, and a lot of information. In this demo, we are going to use a tool called Volatility, which is an open source tool that is specialized for memory analytics. So let's see how this works. So in this tutorial, we'll be analyzing a Windows memory dump, which has an infection in it. In forensics, memory is an important area because most of the malware today is we see fileless malwares where the virus is residing in memory. Uh, there's no hard file copy and it will be like running and staying resident in the memory. So first of all, where you can get volatility, you have to visit uh, volatilityfoundation.org. So just Google for volatility download and you'll get the volatility 2.6 release. So this is available for Windows and Linux. If you have a Kali Linux installation, it's a Python script is already installed in Kali. Download the standalone 64 executable over here. I have already saved a copy of volatility in my folder. So this is the volatility, which is about 15 MB. Remember, this is a command line tool. And the commands are very easy. Like you don't have to memorize a lot of commands. You can just go in and just explore the memory easily with the command line. Okay. How do you analyze the memory? Now, what we have to do is we have to dump the memory into a file. We have to have get a memory dump. There are different tools for Windows and as well as Linux. So Windows, there is a lot of tools like Win32DD, Memorize, FastDump, but I have used uh, Dump It because it's very easy. You just have to run this file and it will capture the memory and copy it to a file. If you are running a virtual machine, you can first of all suspend the machine and you have to look for the .vmm file. This is unique for each software, like for example, vmm is available in VMware virtual machines. You have just research how do you acquire the memory in virtualization, hypervisor, how they use it. Or otherwise you can run this dump it software or anything inside the VM and get it. Once you acquire the memory, you can use volatility. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use some memory samples that are given by the volatility framework, which is available on GitHub. So there's a lot of memory dumps over here. I'm going to use the Crydex memory. So Crydex is a popular branching Trojan that was like very popular during Windows XP times and has some unique things that we can learn a lot from it and it's very easy to analyze. So I have already downloaded it. Once you download it, you will get a Crydex VMM file over here. Okay, so how do you start? So it's located in my C drive volatility. Let me see. Yep, I'm over here. So I have, I'm having the same files over here. So let me take this into a dark screen so it will be easy. So what are the commands that is available in volatility? Volatility.exe and double dash help. Okay, so first of all, it will give a command syntax. How to run, get help and all of those stuff. And these are the most important commands. These are called plugins which each plugin, for example, the connection scan, con scan plugin, it should show the TCP and the IP connections within one. And what are the interesting things you like Hive dump, uh, Hive is like Windows registry dump over here. And yep, process scan, it's like the task manager for what is the memory process that are running in the memory. Okay, so there are a lot of interesting things. You even knew there's a plugin called hash dump, which will actually get the element in NTLM for uh, hashes. So we'll see how to grab these things. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll clear this prompt and you see what other things that I have. So I have the Crydex VM. We need to see what type of a memory dump that you have. So in volatility, you should specify the machine type or you call, you call it the profile. There's a plugin in volatility where you can find what type of a memory dump that we have over here. So you just have to type volatility and dash f for the file name and I have the, my file this is crydex.vm and I'm going to use the plugin image info. So this one actually what it will do is it will run some diagnostics on the memory file and it will show what is the profile that we are running. Okay so once the image information plugin is executed you can see more information on your memory dump. So we can see suggested profiles are in XP service pack 2 and service pack 3. I believe this is a service pack 2 dump. You can try this one also, both will work. So it's handy to keep a copy of the details, image, 
profile is right. We have uh, the computer now, it's a Windows XP dump. What we can do is, using this profile, now we can acquire information from the memory dump. Again, I'm going to volatility and I'm going to say F Crydex. This time, I'm going to use the argument called profile and I have to give the profile over here. So what I'm going to do next is actually, we are going to get the list of processors that are run. So this is the first place that we should look at when you're looking at a memory dump. So I'm saying PS list, uh, that's the command to get the process list that are executing. Okay, so we have a lot of processors that are running. You can get the process name and the process ID that is running. And here, for example, Okay, I'm a little bit suspicious about this readacl.exe, but I'm not sure yet. Okay, here you have the PID and the PPID. PPID is the parent process ID. Now, 1640 is this uh, is the ID of this, and 1484 is the process uh, parent process. So let me check what is 1484. So it is explorer.exe, which means explorer.exe has uh, launched this particular process. So I'm going to copy this one over here. I'm a bit suspicious, but I'm not coming into any conclusions right now. Okay, so this is a suspicious process. Read sl.exe. You can also view this one in another easy way called this another plugin called PS3. Once you run this, it will actually show in a process tree view. This process tree actually it's very easy now. Here you can see explore.exe and reader.excel. So here this is the first level is the parent process and a dot means this is under this so it's very easy to view in this view okay so you can grab screenshots during your investigation or as um, what i'm doing now uh, you can grab the important stuff that you have found so i'm going to copy this one and i'm going to copy these things which will be easy for my investigation okay the event and some okay All right so once you have the process list, it will get you like where to start from. Uh, there's another thing that normally malwares do is they can hide themselves in normal views. So we can use another plugin called PSX View. This will actually show uh, what are the hidden processors running in this memory dump. Okay, so we have it's executing right now. Give it some time. Okay. So once this is executed, you can see uh, this view will show the process and the tool where it is showing. So if you have the plugin uh, PS list means you can see all these processors in the PS list command. And PS scan command if you run, you can see all this stuff. And according to this dump, there is no processors that are hidden. So we, we are able to see all the processors that are running. But in other investigations, you can just run PS6 view to see any hidden processors, which will be very suspicious. You should be analyzing them first. Okay. Uh, another thing is if you have malware or a botnet uh, type of a malware, they will try to make connections, external connections or network connections. I'm going to use conscan, C O double N scan. So this will show all the connections that are made from our host machine when the memory dump was taken. Okay. So I can see two types of network activity from here. That is one is connected to 4165, this 80, and it's connected to port 8080. Probably a proxy, but in your environment, if you don't have a proxy, seeing this type of connection is very suspicious. So this is a bit suspicious. And who has created the connection? Process ID 1484. We saw this number earlier. So 1484 is explore.exe. Mm -hmm. So Explorer has made these connections. Uh, you can check the IP, but for my investigation, I'm going to keep a copy of this also. So this is the output that I got from ConScan. So, uh, so remember, ConScan only shows the TCP connections, okay? You can view TCP and UDP connections using the command sockets. So sockets will actually help you to view more detailed connections like it will show the open sockets from where it is open. Now we can see, so what are the connections that are open at this time? So these are the connections that were made, that was existing and at the time of execution, this socket was open and you can see uh, process ID 184, port 1038, that's the source port. 
and it is uh, making a connection towards out this is also another important uh, information that I grabbed from here right so once you grab the connection information process information you can use the command line execution now uh, what happens here is the last commands that were run in the memory now this is not processors you can see the actual command line code that were executed during this so it's also very easy you can use a command called cmd scan i hope it will work in this one if you get empty result remember it's so this profile won't support that command okay yep yeah, as i imagine it is not running uh, there's another command called cmd line so this is like a legacy version i'm going here remember we should be having the same output you can get information about the command line okay oh, we have a lot of things over here right so here you can see name that actually ran from here uh, again we have a process 1484 which was running for explore.exe okay so I'm seeing this. So the path is okay. It's the explorer.exe that we know. Let me just, I'll take a copy. So this is cmd line. So the full path of the executable file. Another thing that we can identify is now remember explorer.exe is running readacel.exe. So what we can see over here is readacel.exe is having process ID 1460. Let's see where is this located. Process, I'm looking for process ID 14640. Yep, and it's here, and we are going to see the path. So it has to do something with the Adobe Reader. Okay, now why does Adobe Reader makes connections to outside network? That's suspicious. Okay, now I know this reader Excel is in the memory and it's running from here what we can do over here is we can actually get a copy of these files from the memory to our further analysis so i'm going to target on process 1640 which is this is because this is suspicious i'm going to use a command called proc dump so which is self explanatory which is the process dump and i'm going to have to specify the process number that is process number 1640 and I'm going to have to say uh, the dump directory where I should it dump. So dump dir dash dir. This is another plugin to download it. I'm going to put a dot over here so it will copy to the current folder that I have. Okay, so let's see what is the process. Okay, so we have the executable 14.exe. If you go into your files, so this is the suspicious file that you have. So remember, this could be actual malware, you're not going to run it in the computer. I'm going to do a small virus turtle scan over here. Uh, I'm going to say virus turtle, right? And I'm going to drop this file. Remember, normally you should get the hash of the file. In one of my previous videos, I have used a small tool to get the hash. Uh, the safest way is you can use the file hash my files, and you can just drag and drop the file over here so you can get the file hash. So this is a safer way to get it. I'm going to copy the md5 hash and I'm going to see if uh, virus turtle has any information about this file. Yep, uh, and it's uh, suspected, it detected as a virus from a lot of virus engines. And you can also get more details on this virus turtle to see what are the file names and the hashes that it has. Okay, so these are the file names of this particular malware. So, oh, readsl.exe and yeah readsl.exe we have it over here so this confirms that we have found the malware okay now the next step is like now we have the malware now if you are in a SOC team if you are like a malware analyst you need to provide the IOCs IOCs are the indication of compromise so we can make sure our detection systems uh, identifies this so remember the hash value is one of the important IOCs so I'm going to copy this hash so this is for the reader.asl.exe okay okay so where is it located we found the location of the file so this is another IOC that we can grab so the location of the file okay so where it is located so I'm going to start a section called IOCs indication of compromise file name the file hash if you want to you can give uh, the second hash also 
copy the SHA-1 also because it will be important. So I'll just mark these, label these, so it will be easy for in the long run. And SHA-1. Okay, awesome. So we have information about Redirall AXE. So next thing is that we can uh, do, uh, we can actually go into the process memory dump. When a process is running in the memory, it has a lot of clear text stuff in it. It will has the IPs that is connected. It is having where it is uh, like what are the files that are loaded, a lot of things. So I'm going to get a memory dump of the particular file that is running. It's very easy. You just need to change proc dump into mem dump. Okay. And again, process, the process ID is process 1640. And again, dump dash dir into the local location just run this and this will actually give the memory dump that you want to see okay so we have uh, the file over here oops yeah the mistake that i did was uh, i had to mention i make sure process id is mentioned like this run it to again okay so this 164 DMP is remember it is the process dump. Now this is having uh, 75 megabytes of data, a lot of text stuff inside this, right? So here we have to go like out of volatility. I'm going to use another tool. Uh, so in Linux, you can use a tool called strings to identify what are the text values. But when it comes to Windows, you have to use a special tool called strings, which is given by sys internals. Remember, they provide a lot of useful tools like this. So strings is very similar to the Linux strings. And again, another tool that I'm using is this command prompt. This command prompt actually has a lot of Linux and uh, Windows features over here. So if I press dir file, that's the Windows command. Also, I can try ls at the same time. Okay. So you can use this command prompt also. It's also free download and it's portable. Remember all of the tools that I mentioned are like, you can just copy to USB drive and you can run it anywhere. You don't have no need to install them. Okay, right. So here the extra tool that I have to download is I had already downloaded strings. So what I'm going to see here is I'm going to see all the string values, which is in the string. So strings is very easy to use. So strings and you have to say 1640 and the DMP file. Uh, when you run this actually you will be seeing all the text characters which is in this particular tool okay now it's it's having a lot of information now what information are we interested in okay uh, i'm going to stop this uh, from here just press ctrl c and put it clear okay i'm going to check something like we saw some connections that were made uh, ip which is connecting outside so I'm going to check if this particular IP exists in this memory dump. This will help me to see what are the connections that are made. So here I'm going to show using a grep command. Uh, in Windows, you can use find str, but I'm more comfortable with grep. So we'll see if there is any command related to this particular thing. So we have a connection and you can see there's a HTTP connection which is made inside. So I can uh, like a slash I to ignore any use cases. If I'm searching for a particular word, or something if it's case sensitive this will ignore that one so i'm going to try my ip over here i'm going to use command call capital c so this will actually show you now remember grepping showed only one line what if you want to search the earlier lines and the next lines what were after this remember here you can see more information so what i'm going to do is i'm, I'm going to see continuation lines of uh, five now by adding the Five C5 continuation lines, you could see the before and after after it's finding the specific value, right? You can see clearly it's trying to connect a lot of IPs. And at one point, the next command in the next process line, it actually made a post request. Now post means it is actually sending some data outside. So this malware is sending something about the host outside. Remember, all of these are indication of compromises. So we just found out it's made in a post. Let me grab this. Okay, and uh, this is another IOC which is making and it's connecting as a Mozilla. 
okay and these are some of the ips now remember this is because of the continuation now i am interested in this particular section remember in all the ips it's compromised it's connecting to only one, uh, one particular url so i'm going to copy this line okay check my earlier command now i'm going to say okay search for this I'm going to not going to say any continuation lines. I won't be needing that one now. So here in this string, it will see all the IPs that are trying to connect. Right. So remember, this particular URL is also an indication of compromise. The host, if it's connecting to this particular part, we can clearly say it's connecting to malware infected server and which means that a particular host is infected. See these IPs also, which is important. If any of the hosts are connecting to these particular IPs, again, we found these IPs and port 88 connection. So I'm getting a bit curious over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for any .com addresses. Okay. So looking at this dump, we can see it is trying to connect to a lot of banking sites. Okay. Now, Crydix is very popular uh, banking uh, email trojan. So it's connecting to all the bank sites or it is trying to look at uh, all the bank sites it's running for. So which makes this process again very suspicious. If you just saw this one in the first time, now this is something that should be eye opening for you. Okay. Another thing that we can check with volatility is uh, the startup location of the Midas. Now, so most firewares normally what we'll do is they will try to automatically execute every time the system boots up. So this will be like making the deletion very hard. Even if you uh, uh, remove the malware or remove it from memory, there will be another file actually loading the malware. So these kind of things you can see in the Windows registry. So here we can use a command called hive list. So hive list actually shows you registry keys and the entries. Okay. I am interested in this particular location. So here I'm going to use a command called print key. Print the key value inside the registry. So here you have to say print key K and this is the common part available. And in double quotations we are specifying if you have spaces or anything you can specify like this. And this will show you what is actually in the run. Okay, so we have seen a lot of startup entries, uh, which is that file, again another that file. That, oh, okay, this is pretty interesting. So here, uh, this particular file. See document settings, Robert, application data, and this. Why does application data have an exe, which is very suspicious. This will be... Uh, interesting thing why does it have to start up every time when the computer starts i'm going to put this in my run so i found this one in run save it now this file and the file name that we already found are two different things now how do you relate oh these two files are related it's very easy just copy this file name uh, you can remember we search for strings inside the dump so another thing is okay if this random file name which we found from the area which is a startup if this is in the strings of the malicious process that we found it could be yes so there is one finding this is a finding inside this so in summary what we just found was this particular exe you can see you can get the paths also So in the deletion process, this will be the username, something over here. Okay. So if you are going to delete the malware permanently, you should delete this particular thing. So you can see the connections now. You found some uh, strong headers. So you found the process which is running from this location and the process which is running it is running on the explorer and this is the actual infected file that is residing in the computer and yeah there is a lot of other commands for example as a bonus i'll just show you another one of my favorite command called hash dump I forgot the p over there 
so in this uh, image, I think they have removed or something like that. So the hash dump command actually is used for like dumping the Windows credential hashes. Okay, so you can play around with those things. So I hope you understand. So this is the end of the basic Crydex malware analysis. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. And if you have any questions related to this, please post it on the comment section. And if you want to see videos like this in the future, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.